Mike Tyson is to throw a lot of punches, to keep busy, to keep boxing. But when we talked to Tyson last night, he said, and he said it very simply, very understated like he does, at some point you got to stop throwing punches. So Mike Tyson, taught, of course, by Custom Auto. His story has been told at nauseam, I think. Came out of the Tyson School for Boys, one of the most incorrigible places to be. Learned four years of reading skills in the space of six months. He's very, very dedicated. Here's a look at the tail of the tape, and of course, the only number that jumps out at you is the number on reach. But it was Angelo Dundee who said, don't give me height and reach, give me a guy who can fight. Yeah, I think the only thing that's overstated about Tyson is his height, which is, I think, closer to 5'9 than 5'11 and 3 quarters. It is true there's a lot of hype about the man, but despite the fact of all the hype, he seems to be able to live up to the clippings, Larry. And here is our punch stat, our statistical toy that gives you a quantitative look at the fight. Interesting thing about Tyson is he throws those 45 punches around, and they're all mean, hard punches. None of that, those probing little jabs. Rebalta's numbers are so different because the two fighters he fought had such different styles. And so what he does will obviously be dictated by what Tyson does. There are the body punches that Tyson has thrown. As you see, Quick Tillis, who did fight him like a knuckleball, was able to stay away from him. Now, Jose Rebalta, there you see the numbers of jabs he threw in his two fights with recognizable opponents. Let us then take a look at the rules here in New Jersey. The scoring is by rounds. The three knockdown rule will be in effect, much to the chagrin, I'm sure, of Jose Ribalta. There is a mandatory standing eight count. You can only be saved for the bell in the final round, and the ring doctor can, in fact, stop the fight. So those are the New Jersey rules. Let's get to the ring announcer, Marvin Goldberg, now for the introduction of the fighters. Tonight's boxing program is presented by Trump Plaza Casino in association with Frank Gell Promotions and sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Chairman Jerry Gormley and Commissioner Larry Hazard. The judges are John Stewart, Rich Strange, and Phil Newman. Timekeeper Roosevelt Gilbert, ring physicians Frank Doggett, Paul Williams, and Charles Wilson. Counting for the knockdown, Frank Papacino, and the referee for this 10-round bout, Rudy Battle. In the red corner, from Miami Beach, Florida, with a record of 23 and 316 by knockout, wearing white straps with a red trim, weighing 211 and a half pounds, Jose Nino Ribalta. And in the blue corner, Undefeated in 25 bouts, 23 by knockout from the Catskills, New York, wearing black trunks, weighing 213 and a half, Mike Tyson. I want you both to stop punching and step back, protecting yourselves at all times. Remember, a foul can cost to the round. Mandatory eight count is in effect. Watch your low blows and watch the holding and hitting. Any questions here? All right, I want a clean contest. Good luck to both of you. Let's shake hands. Okay, don't anybody go to the toilet or the refrigerator. Mike Tyson has short working hours. He punches in and punches out. And a battle of stairs was a draw. Now what happens remains to be seen. Pat Putnam of Sports Illustrated probably put it best. Tyson has the anticipation of a Doberman who's happened upon 210 pounds of unguarded meat. Just as expected, Tyson is right in the chest of the Balta. The Balta has problems with uh, Marvis Frazier. Couldn't keep him off. And what he's going to have to do against the style of a Mike Tyson is to tie him up when he's inside, not to try to exchange punch for punch. He can't do that. A right hand by Tyson that at least got the attention of Rivalta. You notice the way that Tyson's working the body. Stays very close to his opponent. I've, I've been
been impressed with the way that uh, Tyson has developed as a fighter. The left hand knocks Rabalta off balance. What does it going to take to beat a Mike Tyson, Burris? You have to have a good jab, mobility, you have to throw combinations, you have to have it all. And a lot of luck. Well, he said the only him, film he watched was that of the Quick Tillis fight, and he hopes to emulate what Tillis did. Of course, when we talked to Tyson, he said, I don't mean to take anything away from Tillis, but if I were to fight him again tomorrow, I'd knock him out in one round. Stay off that net. Stay off the that was a pretty good move by Rabo. He was able to tie up uh, Mike, Mike Tyson. No. Cases like this, you notice he's tying them up, not giving uh, Tyson any punching room. And he has to keep those hands very high. Rabo has to keep those hands up at all times. Big right hand again, but Rabalta stays right there, holds on. He took a pretty good shot that time. You notice that uh, Tyson also is starting to wing his punch, especially to the body. I think with the height advantage, he has to go downstairs first. Stay downstairs and bring those hands down of Rabalta. Because those punches that uh, Tyson throws, it's going to take a great deal of wearing down on a tall man like Rabalta. Tyson throws some vicious shots to the body. The impressive thing about Rebolta there was he did maintain his poise. Somebody in Rebalta's corner does have confidence. I understand they made a significant bet before the fight, taking seven to one odds. They didn't get enough. <laughs> Kevin Rooney in Tyson's corner saying, keep the jab down. Luis de Cuba, Rebalta's trainer, said his man is tough after the first round, so now we'll see. He knows that the uppercut that Rebalta threw, those are the type of punches uh, that are effective against a guy like Tyson. But you gotta time it. At all times, attempting to throw that kind of shot is dangerous because one thing about Tyson, he has speed, puts a lot of velocity behind his punches, a great deal of power. Rebalta being somewhat effective with the jab. There is the oh, uppercut no. again. And once hey, again, though, you hold notice on. he's tying this man up, not allowing Mike Tyson to work his body. Well, it's an interesting technique, Ray, because he's not running like Green did 
or staying away like Tillis did. Watch your hands in there. Finding a little bit of a different tactic. Well, Rabalta stated that he needs to try to make, or he wants rather, to make uh, Tyson respect him. I see a mistake that Rabalta is making. He's throwing his jab, and at times it lands, but you notice the way that it comes back. It comes back slow, and it drops. So right, a counter right hand by Mike Tyson is inviting. And there was an uppercut. What a shot. Three, four, five, six. You don't see that happen. A guy gets knocked down with an uppercut. Very seldom. It's a rare time. And That's literally power. took him off the ground. It really did. Volta trying to bang with Tyson and gets off the ropes. Rivaldi's in tremendous shape to get off from that punch. Watch the right hand, Barry. It is so inviting. Tyson's body punches are absolutely devastating. Good left to the chin. Uh, here I am, here I am. Here I am. What's clear from that round is that Rebolta is a professional fighter. He's a survivor. Took a very good punch, got up. Knew how to survive the round. Punched back when he was in trouble. There's the punch, terrific uppercut. The reason, or one of the reasons that Tyson has such punching power is that he always stays in punching range of his opponent. He's on top of him, so that those kinds of punches will frequently hit an opponent without the opponent seeing the punch, and those are the punches that do the most damage. There it is. Never saw it coming. Stunned him, but he got up and he went on, to his credit. The issue now is to watch how Michael Tyson is going to try to chop down a fellow who is a good professional journeyman. This is the third round, and he would have found a lot of smart money saying that it would go this far. the way that Mike Tyson works that body. It's a thing of beauty. Very short, executed shots to the midsection, to the ribs. When you sit ringside, Tyson's punches even sound differently than his opponents. His body shots are so hard, there's a distinctly different sound. The reason being, though, is because he promotes that, that fence and that glove, and uh, he's punching very, very clean, very clean. We'll just sit back and let you listen a little bit, see if you can tell the difference in the sound of Tyson's punches. Examples right there, and then the uppercut behind it. Uh, hold on, you got some. Let him go. Let him go. Nice and clean. Stop. Long left hand. Oh, no. I break your side up. Let him go. Get back. 
at the end of that round as if to say, what are you still doing here? They've been telling Rebald in his corner to try to stay in the middle of the ring, and he, 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 he did stay off the ropes more in that round. Take a look at some of these body shots. I wonder if there's more than 10 or 15 people on the planet who could live through those shots. And that, of course, is the ex excitement that Tyson creates that all of us watching these who are not professional heavyweights certainly know that our chances of survival in a confined space with this man are slim and none in slim left town. Fourth round, getting into the category of who to thunk it. No holding, no holding. All right, break, break, break. You're holding, you're holding. Nice we will remind you that Harold Letterman, right, break, our official, break, unofficial break, judge break, here break, on HBO, is scoring the fight for us. And I'm not even sure he brought a pencil. One thing about Revolt, he is not intimidating. He is not intimidated. In fact, uh, the last round, Revolta's corner told him, say, hey, game plan is starting to work now. Either they want Tyson to punch himself out, which is not going to happen, or they want him to get careless. And Rebalta's body, I tell you, it's in fabulous shape because he's taking some devastating shots from Tyson. Well, he has been more effective in the later rounds, so I'm sure that's the thinking of his corner is if he gets by four or five, he will get stronger. He got stronger against Bone Crusher Smith after being knocked down in the first round. Lost a split decision that most everyone feels he won. Tyson's always in your chest. Stays very close to his, to his opponent. Rebald has been trying to throw some straight right hands. Right? It's not going to work. The type of punch is going to work. Or Mike Tyson is the uppercuts. You got to bring him under. Because Tyson has that Bob and Weaving style. And Rebald got himself in trouble on the ropes again. Let him go. You got to rest. Watch your hands in there. Tell him to. Tyson just turned south for him. Both those punches were caught on the gloves of the ball, incidentally. Oh, I would think Tyson could even hurt you on the gloves. Lunging left hand by Tyson. The right hand is a little short. Other right hand partially caught on the gloves. I think we're getting to that point where the catch-22 that Tyson has created has come into focus. 
I'll talk about that in a moment after Harold, you tell us how you scored this fight. Well, Larry, I've got the first four rounds for Mike Tyson. Based on the four points on which we score, the clean punching, Mike is all over him, blending the clean hard shots, the effective aggressiveness, the ring generalship, he takes him up on the ropes. Uh, interestingly enough, for defense, Jose Rebolta seems to be holding. That's his basic defense. You know, he's just trying to tire Mike up by holding him. It's a survival tactic. But getting back to what I was saying before, this catch-22, if he knocks this fellow out in a round or two, everybody says he just knocked out another bum. When's he going to fight somebody? And if the fight goes longer, everybody says, well, maybe he's not quite that good. But he's, he is in there with a professional. He is dominating the fight. And again, the point right now is to see whether Tyson can sustain his fury and cut this big man down. And I think when you look at the fights that Tyson has taken to a decision, save the Tillis fight, he pitched a virtual shutout against Green. And according to Harold Letterman, he's pitching one here. He lost one round against Mitch Green. Just for your information, Ray, his corner told the ball to between rounds, okay, now you can start to dominate the fight. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think that's long overdue, Larry. In fact, uh, robota has been giving away rounds, especially inside. You notice that uh, Tyson throws a great deal of body shots. Starting to, start to slow down the ball to. an uppercut by Rivalta and Tyson right back with two shots to the body. Rivalta getting off the quicker punches there. When those guys stand toe-to-toe -to -toe like they just a second ago and exchange punches, <laughs> I have a funny feel, a funny suspicion that Tyson's punch is going to get there first. You notice when Rivalta throws his uppercut, his chin is wide open. He is so susceptible to the right hand. You notice how he throws his punches, Burr. He drops, he drops the other hand. Rivalta seems to have lost maybe a half step here. You know, and again, Ray, the thing about Tyson is he just never seems to let his opponent catch his breath. Well, he never lets up. He keeps that momentum. He's like a train, locomotive. Right hand by Rivalta. But he pays the price for every right hand he throws. legs just he, he seems to be a little more stiff legged he doesn't seem to have much bounce but he but he wasn't just trying to survive in that round he was trying to land something he's trying to fight and i give him credit for that said to Mike Tyson was, Mike, you're sticking the joint out, you're throwing one punch at a time, and you're not throwing them with enough bad intentions. Bad intentions mean intentions, an old saying of Customato. Let's see if, let's see if Tyson can step it up here. You know what's frustrating Mike Tyson is the clinch and the tying up that Rebaldo has been doing from the very first round. 
It's a good move on his part, mainly because he's not allowing Tyson to get his punches off as much as he wants to. We have a Spanish interpreter, and what he tells us went on in Rebolta's corner after that round, during that uh, timeout, was that they told him that Tyson has never been in a fight as tough as this. Now start to pressure him. I think, I don't know if he can pressure him, but I think the cornerman who said that is absolutely right. Yeah, because unlike Tillis or Green, as he mentioned, Rivalta is staying in the fight. Rivalta has stand power. I mean, no one expects too much from Rivalta. It's a combination from Rivalta and also a low blow by Rivalta. The guy has a chin. Rivalta has a good chin. And that's what's been saving him thus far. Tyson will have to do to slow down or either stop Rebaltos and catch him in his tracks. Catch him while Rebaltos are tipping throw one of those looping uppercuts. Oh, no. And also, like uh, Tyson's going to say, got to throw more punches. Less than one punch. Tyson just missing that uppercut. I break Ryan. Let him loose. Let him go. Step back. Are right, you resting? You resting? Let him go. Step back. Let him loose. Walk your head. All right. Yeah, Rapalta is taking some very good shots from Mike Tyson. Hasn't let Tyson double up as much as Mike would like to, or as Kevin Rooney in his corner would like him to. That was a good left hand. Rebolta's fighting back. He's holding his own right now. I think Tyson is a little frustrated because he hasn't been in a fight like this before, a fight that wasn't an early knockout and in which his opponent continued to really fight back. So we're going to see if Tyson learned anything from his decisions, his previous 10-round decisions, and whether he can sustain it. Harold, how's the fight scored now? Well, Barry, I've got it 5-1 to one in favor of Mike Tyson. Uh, I give the sixth round to Jose Rebolta mainly because Mike Tyson didn't throw a lot of punches, and Jose did throw some punches and did land some punches. Uh, I think Jose's picking up the pace, as you said, a little, and certainly he's getting in some punches, and I think he takes a tremendous rap, and he's holding his own. A very succinct and accurate analysis. And I think now, Ray, people are going to start to ask, is that vaunted punching power of Mike Tyson going to be able to take out the big, tough heavyweights who he hasn't fought yet? I think so. I think the, this, the style of Rebalto is creating a few problems for Mike Tyson. Maybe is the height, the height advantage. But uh, Rebalto has been doing the right thing. He's tying his man up. He's not allowing Mike Tyson to get off. He still is not seen, as Larry mentioned, the, the bigger heavyweights, the Burbicks at 227 or the Witherspoons at 230 or so. Remember, Rebalta is only 211. But he, he's rangy. I think his style creates problems for a guy like Mike Tyson. Tyson also, like his corner, once again stated, he has to throw more than one punch. He has worked both hands. Another thing to mention is that Mike Tyson has never knocked out an opponent after the sixth round. So there's some new territory here for Tyson. Thank you. 
must have been studying a lot of films on Mike Tyson because he's fighting the right way. Every time Tyson gets close to his chest, tie him up and push his head down. Well, Luis de Cuba said the only film they watched was the one of Tillis. And of course, Tyson went 10 rounds with Quick Tillis. There's some tape that's hanging down what it was on the left level of uh, the ball. There was a big right hand. But again, Rivalta showing a good chin. He was hurt, no question about it. Tyson went back to his corner like a mournful student who hadn't done his job, didn't know the verbs. There's Tyson at work on the ropes, and there's that big right hand. But Rebolta came right back. I imagine Tim Witherspoon is out there somewhere, and Mr. Burbick saying, my goodness, how hard does he hit? Exchange to start this the eighth round. chant of Jose. The crowd is fickle, I see. Well, they're appreciative of what has been a rugged battle on the part of, can't say the challenger because it's not a championship fight, right. but the decided underdog, Jose Rivalta. is on top of him. Rebalta ties him up. Rebalta appears to be wearing down now, man. He's still got a long way to go in this eighth round, halfway. There's a big right hand, and Rebalta is about to go. him up again, showing a lot of boxing. Look at Rebalta's legs. They're shot. There's no spring in his legs. This is all instinct. Body shot and an uppercut again. Rebalta taking a lot of punishment in this round. And another big right hand. Back to the body. seconds remaining in the round. His mouthpiece has been knocked out so quite naturally. He, he's in for a broken jaw here because he's getting straight up too, Barry. There is no spring. And there's a smashing left hand. And wisely, Tony Battle will send five. Tyson to a neutral corner. That was
was very smart on the part of the referee because Rivalta's arms were locked in the ropes. round for Mike Tyson on a number of scores, mainly because he's shown that even late in the fight now, he can he can summon the energy and the fury, which he didn't know he could do before he went 10 rounds a couple of times in the spring. The most important thing right now, quiet, 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 quiet. Relax, relax. Stay shit together, relax. Don't be excited, understand? Yeah. Let's take a look at Tyson at work. There's a nice uppercut, followed by a good two-punch combination and two rights. And there goes the mouthpiece all the way down to the casino. Later on in the round, it looked like he knocked something else out of his mouth, and it wasn't a mouthpiece, and I hate to even think about what it was. <laughs> Most fighters' knockouts against good fighters are by attrition, not by just one big punch somewhere early in a fight. And Tyson has been wearing down a game opponent, and we'll see if he can wear them all the way down. And Rivalta's gonna have to muster some legs from someplace because they're not under him right now. <laughs> The legs of a bolter are still not there yet. The spring is left. His best bet is to do is to continue to do what he's doing now. That's tie his man up. Oh, another big left hand. Oh, his legs. And he's gone. out. He's really out. And just on top of Mike Tyson. And Tony Battle will have to take a long look here. A right hand the zing by the chin of a bolter. It's only a question of time. Look at the hands. Look at that left hand of Rebalta. Watch, watch for a straight right hand from Mike Tyson or the uppercut. And a long, long way to go here in the ninth round. That's the right hand, Barry. Again, the left hand of Rebalta is steady dropping. He is still dazed. He's tired. And now that Tyson, all he wants to do is counter. Tyson's really taking his time here, measuring his shots. Actually walked in the left hand of Rebaltas. Tyson rushed himself. Got a little anxious for a second there. All he has to do is take his time, give a hiccup of head fight, and drop that right hand. He let Rebalta get off the hook. Tyson getting a little bit careless, it seems here. Well, he got a little, a little anxious for a while there, Barry. Just as he has to just pick his shots. I think he's surprised that uh, Rebalta is still standing. Because Rebalta was hurt a number of times. Ten seconds remaining here in the ninth round, and it appears as if Jose Rivalta will survive yet another storm. Get the antelope. Get 
Tried to survive, he's tried to nice fight the man. Nice he actually caught Tyson with an uppercut. Took two punches in return, but he did catch him with an uppercut. Only the third time that Tyson has been asked to go the limit here. Did it against Tillis, did it against Green, but Green ran from him. And Tillis tried to stay out of harm's way, pretty much. Jose Rebalta has fought it. And the crowd, again, showing its both appreciation and support for Jose Rivalta. Oh, what a shot! And Rivalta's down. He is up, but he is in some trouble. Oh, he seriously hurt this time, though. Hey, how you doing? Uh, you want to continue? Yeah, hell yeah. Okay. Oh, oh. So do you, you want to continue? He said, yeah, hell yeah. That's a fighter. say that there is no way Rivalta could win the fight, but I think the official was wrong for stopping it. He had come back from those punches before. There's no reason to believe that he couldn't have survived that round. Well, a tough way to go down to defeat by Jose Rivalta. But once again, he's another, another, a case of another fighter who probably made more friends by losing this fight to Mike Tyson that he has in his previous 22 victories. If anything, Barry, he gained a great deal of respect from the uh, the boxing public. I mean, he stood in there for 10 rounds with a vicious punch look like Mike Tyson. Let's take another look, Ray, at the end of it all. Big left hand there. That put Rivalta down. Well, Rivalta held his own. I was surprised and very impressed with the fact that he was able to really deal with the pressure of a Mike Tyson. He clinched, he tied Mike Tyson up, never allowed Mike Tyson really get off some good, clean punches until the later rounds. Here, Tyson with that aggressive style and working the left hook, he was able to hurt Rebalta a number of times, but Rebalta maintained his composure, very, very poised, and was able to retaliate with some punches of his own. And Tony Battle stepping in and saying, that's it, that's enough, after asking him the first time, and Rebalta's reply being, yes, hell yes, I want to go on. There's a look at Jose Rebalta sitting on a stool and just kind of taking it easy here. Long night against a guy like Tyson whose punches are just so damaging. Overall, your impressions of Mike Tyson tonight, Ray? Well, I thought Mike Tyson fought a very interesting fight, mainly because of the style of Rebalta. Quite naturally, Rebalta's camp really, really did their stud homework and saw something that was able to frustrate Mike Tyson. That was a clinch, tie him up, not let him get his punches off and work on some uppercuts. So you probably will hear from this man again, Jose Rivalta. Chances are he will get a shot at some of the other heavyweights around. Doesn't really want to see this man around. Who looks like he's just had a walk in the park, actually. Let's look at some of the numbers from our punch stat statistics and see if we can give you an idea of how this fight went at least from a statistical point of view. Tyson, and you would expect the fact that he landed more than twice the punches that Rivalta did. Tyson's always right on top of his man. That's what he did tonight, too. No secrets with Mike Tyson. Landing 68% of his punches, and that's pretty effective. He threw a lot of punches, and especially with the style of Tyson, 
Um, bobbing and weaving, staying low. It's, per, it's pretty difficult to land those kind of punches. And Rivalta just was unable to jab effectively. I can't really say, at least I wouldn't think, that that had a great effect on the outcome of the fight, but 24% effectiveness on the jabs of Rivalta, and 8 out of 10 for Mike Tyson. Well, they insisted upon uh, Rivalta to throw more left jabs. Rivalta made the mistake of throwing a jab here, a jab there. It would take a, a lot of jabs to keep... Mike Tyson off balance, Barry. All right, let's get the official decision then from the ring announcer, Marvin Goldberg. Marvin? The time, one minute and 37 seconds of the 10th round. Referee stops the bow, winner by a TKO, Mike Tyson. Will you watch Bert Cooper work in a small, dimly 